Hello, my cookies. Welcome to Russell Cooks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, I have, it's kind of like a Faroto, if you will. It's Faro in the Instant Pot. I love this thing. Faro normally takes anywhere between 40 and 90 minutes. The rice is normally 20. So as a home cook, I normally err on doing some rice. But the Instant Pot, I can make some Faro. Let's gather our ingredients. You are going to need a couple cups of Faro. Some people call it Faro, each their own. You need some parm or pecorino romano, some olive oil, don't roll away. You're gonna need some butter, some leeks, celery. You're gonna need some chicken broth. Other veg is up to you. I like this because it's kind of a blank slate. Faro to me is kind of a, in between a winter and a spring dish. It's a great canvas for a lot of fresh vegetables. I'm gonna be doing some zucchini. I'm gonna shred it up, stir it in at the end. If you do carrots, you can throw it in with the celery or shred it up and throw it in at the end like I'm doing with the zucchini. These are great here. Fiddleheads, scallions, pretty much the sky's the limit. So have fun with it. You're also gonna need some bacon. Now you can use pancetta as well. I just cut up about eight ounces of bacon. So anywhere between six and eight ounces is fine. So it's about six to eight slices here. Meat isn't gonna be the main ingredient here. We're making a lot of farro. It's gonna add some nice smokiness, a little bit of richness, and uh, who doesn't love some bacon? Mwah. You are gonna need some garlic powder, and you're also gonna need some white wine or a very dry rosé, which is what I have here. Now that we've gathered our ingredients, let's get started. First, I'm gonna deal with these leeks. These were pretty dirty. You're going Russell. These are pretty tiny leeks. What's the deal? You're right, they're not that long, but it's not the size of the leek that matters. It's how you use it. So we're just gonna cut them up, clean them up. Look at how dirty this end is. This is just filthy. I'm just gonna trim these ends off. You're gonna want probably two pounds of leeks before trimming. So I'm gonna kind of sharpen it almost like a pencil here. And I'm gonna get off all the dark green, but I'm gonna try and keep as much as that core as possible because we can still use that. And that's getting more bang for my buck. And pretty much if I do that with all these, I will have another little bit here that otherwise would have gone to waste. It's gonna have these, I'm gonna cut it between a quarter and a half inch slices here. And then we're gonna get these in and we're gonna wash them. You gotta wash them again. Just look, there's still dirt in there. Let's get these rinsed. Let's get this instant pot here. All right, I'm gonna start with a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna put maybe about a tablespoon in. We are also going to render our bacon down and get a little bit more fat there. So if you're not using bacon, do a bunch more, maybe a quarter cup of oil. I like it pretty rich. I'm just gonna heat that up with the bacon on the highest saute function, saute. Let's get the bacon in. Now, while that's heating up, let's get our farro. The creamiest risottos with farro, what you typically do is you take all of it and you essentially pulse it in a blender, you break it up and you get some powder and whatnot. I'm not gonna do that here. You can absolutely do that. You will have a smoother texture than I'm gonna have, but I don't wanna dirty my blender and I think the end result is gonna be fantastic anyway. So I'm gonna do two cups here. The other thing about farro is you wanna rinse it just like rice. So this is gonna have a whole bunch of stuff on the outside but these are kind of bitter compounds. So you want to rinse them off. You don't have to rinse it as long as rice, which typically takes a few minutes, but you want to rinse this farro. That's cooking. I'm also gonna cut up a little bit of celery here. I'm gonna do about three. I like celery. I think it adds some really good background flavor. All right, we're just gonna saute this till the bacon gets crispy and renders out all that fat. That's gonna take upwards of five minutes. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna cut this celery into inch pieces. You want them big enough so that they can survive the cooking without turning to mush, but small enough so you can eat them. Just gonna combine them with my leeks because they're going in at the same time here. I'm just gonna wash up these zucchini. They don't go in until the end, but I wanna get them prepped. I'm gonna start with one zucchini and we'll see. All right, I'm just gonna add the leeks and the celery. I'm just gonna sweat these down in the bacon fat. Oh yeah, it smells amazing. Scrape up any browning that's stuck to the bottom here. So this Instant Pot is not nonstick, so the stuff will kind of stick to the bottom. That's fine. We're gonna deglaze with these leeks and the celery, and then I'm gonna deglaze with a little bit of wine. Cook these, you want them softened a little bit. You're gonna take off a little bit of that edge from the leeks, that sharp onioniness, and it's gonna turn into a little bit more of that savoriness. So we gotta get there before we do our pressure cooking. And this is gonna take about five minutes. Now, if you notice, I also have not included salt yet. And that's because the bacon is gonna be salty. The Parmesan we're adding at the end will be salty. There's salt in the chicken stock. I don't wanna over season it. Oh, these leeks smell amazing. You know, and the great part about this recipe is if you want, you can make this into a soup. Just add more chicken broth. Boom. 
And if you're keeping it vegetarian or vegan even, obviously omit the bacon, omit the butter, and then use either plant-based Parmesan and veg stock for the chicken broth. I'm just increasing the time because the Instant Pot puts some time on your saute. Base level is like 30 minutes, but if it kicks off and you don't know, it's not good. I just want to make sure it's still going. All right, my leeks and celery are bright green. They're slightly softened. I'm right where I want to be. I am going to add about a tablespoon of garlic powder. So I'm just going to cook this garlic powder, let it bloom a little bit. It's going to take about 30 seconds. Yep, definitely smelling the garlic. It's been about 30. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of white wine, about a half cup, just to deglaze the bottom. All right, now I'm just gonna cook that. Mm, I'm just gonna cook that for about a minute. I want it pretty much evaporated here. Now I'm gonna add my rinsed farro, two cups. Stir it around. And I'm gonna add four cups of chicken stock, chicken broth, whatever you have. Now you might need a little extra. We can always adjust the consistency afterwards with a little bit of water or additional broth as needed. We're gonna stir that around and we're pretty much done. We just gotta let it cook now. All right, I'm gonna turn the machine off. Hit cancel. I'm gonna lock the lid in place. Make sure it's sealed. And I am going to select the pressure cooker function right here. I'm gonna drop my time down to 12 minutes and I am going to set it to the high pressure. Now all we gotta do is wait. So final thing, it's just the zucchini and I'm gonna shred it. It's gonna go in right at the end while it's still ripping hot. I'm gonna stir it around. It's gonna cook through almost instantly. We can let it sit for a little bit so the farro sucks up any more liquid. This will give off a little bit of liquid, but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna shred it on a box grater. All right, I'm gonna shut this off now. We have timed it out. I'm gonna pop the seal. You gotta pop the seal. Let's open it up. Let's take a look at our, oh yes. All right, we have our farro here. It's not really much of a looker yet. Bear with me. We're going to stir it up. There's going to be a little bit of extra liquid. That's fine. But look at how the farro has really broken up. It's released a lot of its nuttiness. It's still going to have a little bit of chew. We built so much flavor into this. Remember, we got the bacon, the leeks. We got the celery. I know it doesn't look like much. This is going to be fantastic. I'm just going to give it a little stir. Now, this is a trick for risotto. If you ever make risotto, they tell you, you add a little bit of broth, you stir it until it gets absorbed then you add a little bit of broth mm, yeah or you can just add it all cook it and then right at the end stir for a solid three minutes so that's what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna stir i'm using nana's wooden spoon none of that slick plastic stuff it needs to be wooden because it needs to be rough it needs to be worn it needs to be an old wooden spoon i don't make the rules i just follow them and i'm just gonna stir and that abrasiveness from the wood is gonna kind of scratch against these little grains it's gonna release some starch and it's already looking if you can see a little bit thicker here but you can see it's starting to get less soupy it's starting to look a little bit kind of creamy and that's coming from this stirring and at the same time, I'm going to put in my one zucchini because we're packing a whole bunch of veg in here. Don't worry, my kids will not eat this. They will try it. I'm going to put in a whole bunch of parm. Let's say a quarter cup. You can always add more. And I'm going to add a little bit of butter here. I'm going to say maybe two tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to add a little bit of richness in there. I know it kind of looks a little bit like slop, but it's gonna be fantastic, it's gonna be delicious. Now, when I was taught how to make risotto, you've heard this from me before. The rule is for risottos, you want them fighting to stay up, but losing the battle. That zucchini is essentially completely cooked already. Let's get it on a plate. I just wanna see how loose it is. But look how it kind of just very slowly oozes out. It's fighting, but it's losing. That's the consistency we want. I'm gonna put a little bit more parm in. I'm just going to put just a little bit of salt. And this is kosher salt too, a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to use my childhood soup bowl. I think I probably had four of these. There's only one left. This one's got a little handle so I could drink the chocolate milk after eating my Cocoa Krispies. And here we go. Packed with veggies. All right, I'm just going to put a little curly parsley on. Just going to add a little bit of nice green pop. But remember, we start off with bacon, we got a little wine, we got garlic powder, we got celery, we got leeks, we got chicken bone broth, we got our farro, a little parsley. Mmm, that's fantastic. The combination of leek and wine goes hand in hand. I got a little bit of that smoky, salty bacon for my first bite. It's just like a risotto, but the farro has texture. The Parmesan, teeny little hint of that cheesiness there. I think this is a fantastic, it's a transitional dish from winter to spring. You can still use some of those spring flavors, but the warmth and the comfort that the farro brings, it's just winter. It's like warming you from the inside out. 
Thanks everyone for tuning in. That was a Faro risotto or a Faroto with some leeks and bacon. I hope to see you next time. Don't forget, you can follow me on YouTube, Twitch. I'm also on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Take care. 